Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend D.G. Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Kyle Higgins, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dank. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. Something, something. Anyway, I am Phil, joining me as always, it is. Hello, I'm Kristen. And today we'll be covering classic issues, Nightwing 54 and 55, and we've got another new issue, uh, Tales of the Titans number three, where Dick Grayson does make an appearance for, what, two pages? Yep. But he's there, he's there. All right, so should we start with Tales of the Titans? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, so yeah, this time it's uh, a Dawn of Troy issue. So what, what did you think of this? I, I, I'm thinking, that was good. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Trying to bring it up my head. I mean, the Starfire one was pretty good. I mean, they were all pretty good so far, but the Dawn of one might be my favorite so far. But like I said, it's pretty hard because they they've all been pretty good so far. I'll get this one in the last two. Most definitely. I think my one criticism is Donna's eyes are so huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. They went a little too they went a little too Disney princess um when doing her face. Her eyes are you know bigger than her wrists, uh kind of thing. <laughs> well, Amazon royalty, come on. No, I don't think it works like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> if your eyes are bigger than your wrist, Phil, those are some really big eyes. <laughs> Well, the kids, well, the, some of the comic art I've seen in my life, it'd just be thankful it's her eyes that are bigger than her wrists, okay? Okay, that's true, that's true. Uh, but no, I, I like the whole thing about her um, going in and, like, addressing these, like, human rights issues in uh, Markovia and yeah. get a fight with Baron Bedlam Jr. It, felt, it was good, yeah. Mm-hmm. A little, a little something... Yeah, different, but yeah, it's it's good because to be honest, that's where um, that's where the heroes can do the most the most good is this kind of big um, you know human rights violations, obviously threats from space, um, stuff like that. The kind of street level crime that the Bat Family often does is actually probably like not as useful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, I remember reading something somewhere, which is very specific, right? Um, that pointed out, and it's absolutely true. Um, it's it's more important to have the heroes doing this kind of stuff and making the threats bigger because when Batman first started, he was way ahead of the cops, but now the cops have caught up, so it's not as different. Because it used to be that Batman would solve crimes using his cool computer and his you know, gadgets and stuff. But now the cops have all of that stuff. So It's all like back in the day when he teamed up with Jerry Lewis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Me and Kristen were going down a rabbit hole last night uh, the messaging back and forth. Yeah. I saw that on Facebook. I was like, I never I never knew of a Jerry Lewis comic. And I guess like once a year they he team up with different DC heroes. Yeah, I went to look for it on eBay, and yeah, he has mul- Jerry Lewis has multiple comics. Oh yeah, it was like it was like a regular comic for a while there. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. There was one version of the Bat- Batman that was selling for fifteen something, and then the other ones were like all over a hundred dollars. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it said it was sixty six, so it was around the time of the TV show. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, speaking of Batman, my favorite character contractually obligated all right chances number zero eh? all right uh, but i i like um yeah i like these tales of the titans because they're like one and done you know stories and one issue we don't get a lot of that anymore uh 
Yeah, and that used to be how comics were. <laughs> yes. And again, it's like kind of it, it. It it is like in current continuity because we do hear problems with the Amazons and stuff. As uh, yes, everyone who's read Wonder Woman number one as knows. Yeah, tell me about explain that to me. Um, I didn't read it. Well, there was um some kind of rogue Amazon just like basically uh killed a bunch of guys, and so then like you know they did this whole thing where over time like. The government passed like this thing where like they all the Amazons had to leave the country, but of course Wonder Woman refused to. So you know it's you know she's hunting down this killer, but you know meanwhile the the government's basically like, oh no, we're after you. So yes, by law, Amazons aren't supposed to be in the country right now. Well, good thing Donna is maybe part regular human. (laughs) I was gonna say it depends what the origin is this week. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, exactly. But she has so many options, she can just pick one. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I guess the cover was just for like artistic license, but I thought we were gonna get really get into like a, like a new origin or something because there was like all kinds of stuff from her backstory on that cover. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. No. No. Well, although kind of at the end, end. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, that. Oh yeah, that's the. Yeah, there's spo- spoiler kids. Yeah, she. I guess she's beginning uh, letters from her real father, from her biological father. Wild. I don't. I don't think they've ever done that in the comics before, have they? I don't. Think she. So. I think in who is Donna Troy didn't Dick help her find the people that a- adopted her or something? I think so. Yeah. 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 But uh, or no, or or is it even just like neighbors or something from when she was a kid? Or, I don't know something. Oh, but the the reason we're here, yes, I. But yeah, towards the, the end there, she does sit down and talk to Dick. Uh, and again, I mean, that, I think that's one of the best uh, man woman friendships, you know, platonic friendships in comics. Yeah, definitely, it's it's good. Mm-hmm. And and she even makes a joke about it. I was like, how he says, you know, you carry everything. You've done such a good job, Donna. You carry it like it's weightless. And she's like, ah, I'm making a trapeze joke. <laughs> yes. It says it's coming three to five business days by Batmail. He says most people forgive you jokes like that when you flex your assets, but I've known you too long. <laughs> ah, butt joke, get it? <laughs> oh lord. I mean, I mean, the butt jokes were there before, but now I think because of Harley, the Harley Quinn TV show, it's uh, yeah, the they, they he's gonna be known worldwide for that butt now. That butt's gonna be a household name. <laughs> it was Captain America. <laughs> Movie Captain America. Yes. Uh, I imagine comic book Captain America. <laughs> welcome back to Nightwing News. That's Gotham's ass. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, well. All right. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else in the comics this week with Dick. Uh, we got the uh, Batman Catwoman uh, Gotham War uh, Red Hood issue. Where that came out. Okay. I assume it focused on Red Hood. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, supposedly he was supposed to be training Catwoman's people, and of course he's he's brutal about it. So, well, well, while, while he's attempting to hunt down the Joker, because you know, what would you? Well, I, well, he's the guy who killed him too. So, I, I like, know that's what I mean. I know one of the lackeys is like, "Why you want him?" He's like, "He killed me. <laughs> now I'm going to return the faith." <laughs> I thought, uh, he was in a conversation with Catwoman, and he said she said something about, uh, or no, she said something about uh, trying to do it without people getting hurt. And he's like, "Who do you think I am, Dick?" <laughs> he said that. Yeah, it was something like you know about not people not get you know trying to keep people from getting hurt. He's like, "Who do you think I am, Dick?" <laughs> Always in the shadow of perfection. <laughs> Don't let Red Hood hear you say that. Uh, I know. <laughs> All right, so should we get to the uh, issues, the old issues? Yep, I'm scrolling through to open it back up. Okay. Uh, all right, so you want me to do a synopsis for these? Uh, sure, if you want. All right, all right. Well, the first one, Nightwing 54, I love that cover, which is like him and yeah, the Yeah, I was going to say the same. It's one of the best covers. Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, Nightwing 54 from April 2001, which, again, kids, is like 22 years ago. Unbelievable. Uh, In the middle of the cold, cold night, 
uh, writer Chuck Dixon, uh, penciler Greg Land, uh, inker Drew Garassi, colorist Patricia Mul- Mulvihill, and digital chameleon letterer John Costanza, and editor Michael Wright. It is a cold and snowy evening in Bloodhaven when Nightwing is on patrol and saves a young kid from drowning after breaking through an ice layer. The next morning, Dick learns that Delmore Redhorn has returned as chief of police after Wallace Ebersol was murdered. Redhorn's press conference also angers Blockbuster because it seems that their alliance is over. Despite having caught a cold after swimming in icy water, Dick goes to work, i.e. being on patrol with Sergeant Rohrbach. They come across a case of domestic violence, but the female victim refuses to press charges against her boyfriend. Dick is pissed about that and decides to visit the boyfriend as Nightwing after his shift is over. He threatens the man and orders him to leave both his wife and the city forever. The man runs away and Dick thinks he got the message. When Dick returns home, an ambulance is standing in front of the apartment building. John Law explains to him that Bridget Clancy was struck by an electrical charge and that her heart stopped beating. At the same time, Blockbuster has gathered a large group of villains he usually hires. His plan is to finally get rid of Nightwing, but he does not want them all to fight Nightwing. He, but, he, uh, but instead, Lady Vic and company shall be a test for his newest employee called Shrike. Uh, so, remember him from uh, year one, kids? <laughs> yeah, and did, was this in year one coming out kind of simultaneously? Isn't year one from around the same time? It might have been, yeah. I mean, it is like a... I think so, because I think it might have been, or it might have been before this or after. But yeah, like I think, Ch- oh, uh, did Chuck Dixon write that? Because I was going to say, I think it was. Yeah, he did. I think it was, it was kind of a setup for, oh, hey, yeah, this guy's going to show up again. Yeah, uh, I can, I can walk over and look real quick. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say, I know we covered uh, Robin Year One. Uh, yep, we, <laughs> hey kids, uh, yes, this is uh, Nightwing News episode 210. Yes, we covered uh, Robin Year One in episode 27. So scroll way down. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the Capes and Lunatics uh, podcast YouTube channel and uh, go to the Nightwing News uh, you, uh, the, the Nightwing News uh, p- playlist where yeah you just find all the episodes. But yes, we uh, like. Did you hear me? We covered Robin Year One in episode twenty-seven. Oh my god! Wow. Uh, yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, yes, Robin Year One also came out in two thousand one. Yes, I, I, I in four parts. So potentially. Shrike came out in this one before he came out in year one, so it could be could be a big tease. Be like, oh, who's this guy? Well, check out the Robin miniseries, you know, Robin Year One miniseries. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, it's yeah, this issue. Uh, I, I do like when Dick saves the kid, for, you know, who uh, falls into the pond. Well, or, or I like the art. I like Greg Land's yeah. art. I he's not bad. I mean, obviously. He's, Excuse me, way better than I could do, but Scott McDaniel's art on the Nightwing book is not my favorite. Yeah, sometimes it's more like uh, I won't say I won't say abstract, but yeah, it's it's more. I say sometimes it's a little too surreal for me. Because it, it like his style evolved because like he was doing Daredevil for a while and it was more it was more like typical of everyone else, and then all of a sudden he kind of like I don't know if it was the inking or what, but he kind of like went off on a thing yeah where it look started looking more like the nightwing stuff but yeah the yeah the craig lane st- uh, stuff is good like uh like i said when the kid falls in the uh lake or whatever so uh i think has to like dive in that, that is some good art and of course how his rebreather thing is shaped like a bat uh, of course mm. that's so funny blockbuster getting all mad while he's like running on the treadmill yeah testing out that new heart <clears throat> Yeah, but then, like, again, this domestic uh, uh, situation here, it's like, yeah, the husband chases the wife out into the street where Dick and uh, Amy see them, and it's just like, later on we find out they have a baby. I'm like, where's the baby? They just, like, left the baby up there? I guess. Well, and the other kind of comic. Like... Hmm. Well, I mean, I get it. it. I mean, it's better that he left, but also it kind of sounded like she didn't have a lot of money. So when Dick's like, get out of town, then it's like, well, now she is going to have like <laughs> no money. Um, I the, the, the thing I thought of was like, is Dick going to like tell her neither of his identities? It's like, oh, yeah, you don't have to worry about him coming around anymore. Or is she, or is she just going to sit around every day now fearing that he's going to come back? Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, it was a good impulse, 
But I feel like it was not entirely thought through. And again, and, I, but again, and too. I feel like, and I feel like the bats would have known better. Like if he scared the guy off, and then we saw him setting her up with a job program, yeah, and I was, stuff like that. But just scaring the guy off is like the macho guy thing to do, and then doesn't. Uh, like only partially solves the problem. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. I, you know, other stories we've seen, I'm some I'm surprised. Like, a just like you know, miraculously, a job from Wayne Enterprises or something dropped in the right, box yeah. or something. Yeah, <sighs> and, and like she's gonna need a new apartment and stuff because there are many reasons, and I can't totally speak authoritatively, but I mean, generally, when people are in abusive relationships, they financially depend on the abuser they're isolated from other people their self-esteem has been worn down so the person leaving is just a tiny part of the problem yeah well a big part of the problem yeah it's a big part but it would have been good to see the other stuff as well yeah i think it's just a point to really drive home the whole thing where it's just like you know he's a vigilante and he can get quicker you know justice and ah but Clancy's smart enough to know you shut the power off before you work on, you know, like if you're cha- right. changing a light fixture that's, or something. That's no good. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it's fine as long as I don't hit their wire. Uh, <laughs> always turn turn off whatever you're working on, kids. Cut the power. It's so weird because this is kind of like her departure from this book. Because, I mean, this and then the next issue when they take her out in the ambulance. That's like that's like it until... We'll, we'll, I'm trying to remember, does she, she shows up again in New York? I think, but again, that's yeah, because she's going to med school. I mean, they yeah. do talk about how she wants to be a doctor. Because I'm trying to remember, she might have showed up in Tim's book too for a while. Was he in New York? But I'm just, but yeah, it's like on the other side of 100. So I'm just like, that's a, this is a weird way to just like take her out of this book, isn't it? It's just like you can't just yeah. be like, can't just be like, oh hey, bye guys, I'm going to medical school in New York. Yeah. Well, and I think really, I mean, it was cool that. I think it must have been Tomasi that brought her back in. But yeah, I mean, he was only able to do that because it was unclear if she died in the blood. Because it's like, yeah, she kind of just ghosted out of the book and we weren't ever really sure what happened to her. I know. Because I mean, a lot of these people died when chemo got dropped off Bloodhaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know when you think about it. And even before that, like, the, what didn't Blockbuster blow up the the apartment building? Right, yeah. So, yeah. Some bad shit happened to Blood Dave, I know, man. and I'm just like, can they do that because they're going to kill off Dick? It's like, do you have to blow up the whole town just because Dick's going to be dead? I'm so... Yeah, the town existed before without a superhero. We can do it again. <laughs> and even and remember the plan, if Dick was going to die, they were going to have Jason step into that, you know. Yeah. Oh my god, can you imagine that, you know, some of the, like, the familiar faces of, uh, you know, the villains of Bl- Bloodhaven having to deal with, like, this very violent new night <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't have lasted very long. <laughs> yeah, I'd get out of town now, Brutal. Yep. Jason would have taken them out stat. Uh, but yeah, then that whole thing at the end with uh, yeah, Blockbuster testing his uh, minions against Shrike. Well, and we see Amy going to the, uh, the yes. meeting at the church and we find out there are a few good cops in Bloodhaven. <laughs> yeah, and she's basically saying, yeah, I think we can approach this Dick Grayson. Mm. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about Amygdala is living in the building at this time. Yeah, was he from the Bad Books? Yeah, I mean, he was kind of technically, I mean, uh, I mean, Batman fought him before, but that's just because he has, you know, well, as as the nickname suggests, yeah, there's something wrong with his uh, Amygdala, which controls your, uh, like, the motion controls. Yeah, he'd fly in the rages and stuff. Yeah, I remember when he first came in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering... I mean, Shrike, I mean, Shrike, does Wolverine know he, he uh, clipped his color scheme there? I'm trying to see if they list when yeah, that's what I was looking the for issues him. came yeah. out. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, Boone. 511, 181. Oh, first appearance, Nightwing Secret Files and Origins, number one, October 1999, so... Um, Oh, this says it's a 2000 miniseries. Oh, uh, so that's what I, I, th- I thought. I thought it came out maybe right like before this. So, yeah, it's like no one was expecting it. Then it's like, oh, wait, kids, he's back. Oh, uh, okay, yes. This one says uh, the first year 
Robin Year One, number one, because it's four parts. Yeah. It was October 2000, and then it was October, November, December, and then January 01. Yeah. And then... So, yeah, it would have just happened. I love this description. Shrek is a martial artist and assassin who thinks he's Nightwing's arch nemesis. <laughs> Burn! <laughs> So, I mean, that is kind of true, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I mean, I'm trying to think of all the rogues we've gotten over the years, but it's like, who would you say is like Dick's like number one like solo enemy? Would it be Blockbuster? I'm trying to think of who. I else. mean, sometimes it feels like Deathstroke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking of it was like. But technically, oh, Deathstroke I, is the Titans' enemy. Yeah. Although, yeah. Again, uh, as we've yeah. seen, they'll throw him in here to fight Dick solo when the mood strikes them. Uh, all right. You want me to do the synopsis for the other one? And then we'll bring it on. This whole thing. All right. All right. So, Nightwing number 55 from May 2001, Love and Death, uh, by the same t- creative team. Blockbuster has set up a group of villains to test his newest mercenary named Shrike. And this new man seems to be worth the money because he defeats Stallion, Brutal, and Electrocutioner in quick succession. Lady Vic is a little bit tougher, but in the end, Shrike takes her down as well. After this, Giz and Mouse are not eager to jump in as well. Meanwhile, in Lockhaven Penitentiary, Torque makes contact with uh, Kristen's favorite, Tad Ryerstad. I hate that guy. (laughs) After listening to Tad's story, Torque explains that they share enemies in both Blockbuster and Nightwing, and he plans to escape the prison soon with the help of one of the guards. At the same time, a desperate Dick Grayson is running in the John Law's apartment where EMTs <clears throat> try to reanimate Bridget Clancy after she was struck by an electrical charge. Thankfully, the EMTs are successful and Dick is delighted that Bridget will live. So he puts on his costume and takes uh, his good mood to Oracle to spend a romantic evening with her. After Shrike is best at all opponents, Blockbuster put in front of him the crime boss show Shrike pictures of his upcoming target Nightwing. Shrike looks forward to receive five million dollars for this job, although he would, he almost would do it for free. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Remember what the Joker said, kids. If you're good at something, don't do it for free. <laughs> Never do it for free. Man, watch me make this pencil disappear. Ta da! Right. That for free feels. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Uh, wait, where's the job? Uh? Okay, let's actually do the podcast that we get paid nothing for. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, again, the whole Bridget, the whole Clancy thing is so weird. Just because it's like I, I would have thought it was going to be a whole thing where you know Dick would have had to have been like, oh, you know, if she's leaving. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, no, more, no long distance relationship. I'm in love with Barbara. Blah blah blah. You know, but no, they just shock her. Yeah, yeah, true. And then she's gone. And she gets mouth to mouth from the EMT, and it's like she automatically falls in love with them or something. It seems like. Uh, I mean, they don't really do anything with it. They just move on. So I said, we don't see her for a while until yeah, in New York. Yeah, yeah. But there's, I mean, not a lot of dick in costume here, except for swinging the barber's house. But yeah, this one feels mostly like a villain's issue. Yeah. Again, I mean, in two months we'll do the. Um, I think it's 56 through 58, you know, the whole, the whole battle with strike thing. So yeah. So yeah, kids, we'll set that up in for, yeah, for uh, November after we do uh, DC vs. Vampires in October. Halloween, Halloween. Oh, and then I switched it up because I think I had more Nightwing, but uh, in December, I put down some, uh, I found some old team ups with uh, Dick as Robin with Superman. So. Oh, uh, classic. Do something a little uh, hopeful for December. We should do, um, Teen Titans go to the movies since they have that bit about Santa. <laughs> I think we did. We cover Teen Titans go to the movies. Yeah, we've it. done yeah, it. Yeah. I think I need to find the episode of Teen Titans Go that has Santa in it. <laughs> I think he's been in a few, hasn't he? It's been a while since I watched it, but it's been, I think he was in a few. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was trying to watch the series, and then HBO Max switched just to Max, so in it. Erase all the progress I'd made, so now I have to figure out where I was. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I have a TV Time app. You can get an app for your phone where you can like put your shows in, and it'll, you, you can track your progress and stuff. Don't re- it's pretty don't, fancy. Don't, don't don't rely, and it's free. Don't I was gonna say don't rely on those uh, streamers, kids. Burn, burn. 
but, but maybe maybe we'll be getting uh, new episodes of some of our favorite shows soon because uh, it looks like the writer strike may be over. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. Although I don't really know what. I mean, presumably they're going to have more Harley Quinn, but I don't really know about anything else. Yeah, I don't know. Unless they... I know... Uh, I, they, they keep talking about it. I don't think they ever given anything definite, but they're, they've been, for like the last year or two, they've been talking about it. I guess they're working on a uh, Batman, uh, a new Batman animated series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't get any information. Like, is he supposed? Is it supposed to be before he has any Robin? Yeah, or, I don't know. I was gonna say, or maybe we get a Dick Grayson yeah. Robin. Yeah, who knows? And, but it's so weird though, because it's like it's not on Max. Because I guess for some reason they're like, yeah, we're not gonna put it on. But if someone wants to buy it, well, they'll you know. And I think was it Prime? Oh yeah, I think Amazon bought it. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. I was gonna say, I think it's gonna be on Prime Video. So it's just, like, I mean, I have Prime. That's fine. But I'm just like, boy, that's weird. You know, why wouldn't? I thought that was the whole point of Max is for them to keep all the DC stuff under one idiot. Point is for them to make as much money as possible, which is why pretty soon we're just going to circle back around and everyone's going to get yeah. cable again. <laughs> I know, and again, it's it's not like uh, it's it's not like it's any other character. It's, it, if anything sells, it's Batman, right? It brings all the fanboys. Batman, my favorite character. Oh, Ray. But yeah, I thought it was nice that. Nightwing goes to see Barbara because he's happy and just wanted to hang out. It's very cute. So, yes, we electrocuted uh, Clancy and then we had him go see Barbara. So, yes, I think Chuck Dixon definitely putting his uh, hat into the Barbara uh, ring there, yes. Well, I mean, they are officially dating by this time, aren't they? I think so. Uh, Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think since, uh, yeah, they think since No Man's Land, I think, yeah. Because the clock tower is getting They have their first kiss in... No man's land in the yeah as the as the as, yeah as the clock tower is getting uh, invaded yes they kiss yes uh, that's in, like the Nightwing in the thirties somewhere I think yeah because he's already dating her when it's the hunt for Oracle yeah 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 because the no man's land stuff it was like late thirties I think yeah but that's the thing I don't think we ever we ever, we never saw him like sit down with Clancy because I thought stuff was, something was stuff was happening with them so that not just that oh hey yeah I'm I'm with with this girl I've had a crush on for the longest time. <laughs> well, I always thought the thing with Clancy was they kind of went out to a movie or something, and then he kept getting called away, and so... Yeah, maybe. But, yeah. But, yeah, so... But, yeah, I can't see. Yeah, this is big setup for, like I said, we'll cover the next uh, parts of this uh, in November, so... Because October, we have to cover uh, Dick Grace and Lord of the Vampires. Burger King. Yes. It'll be a bloody good time. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Appearances by a lot of your favorite DC characters. Mm. Oh, I did finally. I did. I watched the Harley Quinn finale. Yeah, and again, it was good. But yeah, that ending. It's just like, oh, come on, I'm gonna leave us there. Yeah, of <laughs> course. I gotta get you hooked in to watch next season. <laughs> I know. They coming out of Lazarus, but I like. Yeah, but Bruce just gets released from prison. <laughs> He could have been out. Oh, that feels, feels angry. But yeah, that was like the least. Well, I told you before when Bruce, I was like, oh, he's going to come back. Like, I didn't miss him at all. <laughs> and he could have got out of prison at any time. Just had to yes, get someone's course. daughter a job. <laughs> That's how it is with rich people. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. I think that's why they took. Do you think that's why they took a lot of his fortune? Because they're just like, oh, oh, oh man, do we really want Bruce Wayne to be part of the one percent? You know, now he probably only has a few million. You know, he has that townhouse and stuff. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I only just kind of like dip in and out of the Batman yeah. comics, and sometimes it feels like it's not making that much of a difference. It's like it, it they use it when they want to, and then they ignore it when. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like he still has equipment, but every once in a while, you might see him working on the Batmobile himself. Yeah. But, I mean, I feel like even when he had all that money, he would do that. Because you can't just take the Batmobile to the shop. Ah, good one. No, I was going to say, no, no, no. Remember, back in the day, no, we had Alfred working on it. Yeah, speaking of, I saw something. Someone made a throwaway comment. Alfred's been dead for four years. I know, I know. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, I know it pales in comparison to how long Jason's been dead. Or how long the Waynes and Graysons have been dead. But... I mean, four years, that's a long time. I know. I, 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 Almost every time I read a Batman comic these days, I'm like, okay, when are we bringing Alfred back? 
that's what I said, you know, all this infighting between everybody. So, you know, I, Al, Alfred, that's how we need to end like, the war. It's just Alfred comes back and like, everyone shut, sit down and shut up. <laughs> Go to your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> he would love the, he would love the townhouse. It less rooms to clean. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. There's no cave. It's basically just like a basement or a garage. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but there's just something about the bat cave. Yeah, exactly. No bat, no bat poop to clean up. Come on. Bat poop is very toxic. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Do you want me to, I feel like there isn't a lot to say about fifty-five. Yeah. No. Again, like I said, there's really not even a lot of like dick and costume. Just the one he's going to see Barbara. Yeah. It was. It's basically a strike setup. All right. So. Any thought? Any other thoughts on anything, Kristen? Oh, just still, if you're not reading Wayne Family Adventures. You should. Nice. <laughs> oh man. Next year, I'm gonna have a more are coming out. Next, I'm gonna get it on the schedule for us. Uh, okay. Yeah. That. Please. Yeah. Let's do that. I haven't read it yet. Man, I forgot. Man, I forgot to go to Wendy's for my toys. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. Get cracking. Mm, crack a lacking. All right, so yeah, like I said, uh, all right, so yeah, this is the last episode for September. So in October, yeah, we'll do our new episode uh, reviews, and then uh, the, then we'll do then we'll have the DC vs. Vampires with where Dick Grayson plays a huge part. Oh yeah, that's one thing we should probably add in because we'll really just want to talk about certain issues. We should probably add in his origin as the Vampire King. Apparently, is in DC vs. Vampires All Out War Two and yeah. Three. Oh yeah, anything under that umbrella of DC vs. Vampires, yeah, that's free. It's free reign. So yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Well, I didn't realize that, and I just happened to. Well, it, 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 it just occurred. To me. So because I read something random where somebody was like, "You can tell they changed who was going to be the Vampire King partway through," and I was like, "What? They did." Um, so I Googled it and then it took me to some Reddit forum where people were like, so who do you think is a vampire king? And like the very first post, they were like, it's Dick, isn't it? <laughs> and I was like, dang, people totally called it. Good job. <laughs> Cause I didn't call it, but in my defense, I had only read issue number two before <laughs> it was revealed who the vampire king was. Oh, maybe we could finally get some feedback from Ray. Send, send us in some feedback, Ray, because yeah, that is that is his favorite splash page. Of, yeah. Oh, of Dick killing Batman's Bruce. death. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he hate Batman so much? He just doesn't like when people compare him to Moon Knight. I don't know because he just don't like. He doesn't like it. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And sometimes people think Batman wears a little bit too much plot armor. Bat God, yeah. Yes. My favorite description of his wealth was from a Crack.com article. The Batman is plot hole spacklingly rich. <laughs> uh, I was like, dang, that's I, the best description. How does he beat anyone? Prep time. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So, yeah. And that, that, so, yeah. We'll do that in October. New issues in DC vs. Vampires. All of it. Uh, now, like I said, November, we'll do the new issues in Nightwing 56 through 58. Uh so yeah, that'll that'll follow up this the issues we did tonight, and then yes, in December we'll have our new issues, and last episode of the year we'll do Legends of the DC Universe number six and DC Comics presents thirty one through fifty no thirty one and fifty eight not through thirty one and fifty eight. All right, sounds All right. good. That'll be the end of the year already. Jeez. All right, so yeah, it's, it's practically October. Yeah, in a few days. Yes. All right, kid. Are you gonna be, not, are you gonna be Nightwing for Halloween? <laughs> I wish. All right. Uh, I'll say, are you gonna be Nightwing for? Halloween? Uh, I don't know. I might go with the classic witch because I'm teaching my witchcraft class which oh. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Halloween happens to be a Tuesday, so I might need to be a witch so I can go to class as a witch. <laughs> Uh, but yes, like I said, next time we reconvene here for Nightwing news, yeah, we'll cover the new issues, uh, including Nightwing 107 that comes out October 17th. Oh, did you see the cover for 107? Oh, there, the pirate, yes. It's very swashbuckling. And it says, come for the sea, for the sea's immaculate booty, 
or for the immaculate no come, come for the sea's immaculate beauty stay for nightwing's pirate booty <laughs> uh i didn't see that it says it on the cover that's great <laughs> oh my uh. Is that like the teaser to get you to buy it? It's on the cover, so yeah. Look, yeah, it almost looks like a, one of those romance novels. Yeah, and of course, there's a bunch of variants because again, this book sells well, so put a bunch of variants on it. Also, the, DC has been leaning hard into the variants the past couple of years. Oh yeah, especially especially books that sell like this. Oh man, I love this variant for 107. Look, it's him with all his like. Past oh yeah, I did order that one. And it, yeah. ha- it has the year next to each one. Yeah, I like that. I need a poster yeah. of that. Jeez, that is sweet. Yeah, DC. If that's not a poster, make that a poster. Because you know that'll sell. All when right. does a Beast World start? Um, I don't know. Was it? Was it December? Uh, DC. Here we go. DC Comics Beast World. Uh, oh, oh, there is a. Might be. Okay, November, it looks like. Yeah, because November is Titans Beast World Evolution and Titans Beast World number one. And then there's a bunch in December and January. So, looks like it might start towards the end of November and then run through December and January. I imagine we'll probably have to toss that on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is straight up on the cover. Come for the Glacis Beauty, stay for Nightwing's Pirate Booty. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Butt jokes 24-7, though. <laughs> oh, be really. All right, kids. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Send us your thoughts on, uh, yeah, all the new Nightwing uh, books coming out in October. Send us your all your DC vs. Vampire thoughts. Uh, email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737 at 614-38capes and remember you can find all things capes and lunatics episodes social media merchandise and the patreon so yes please uh subscribe to our patreon help us support this whole thing and uh you can find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network that's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network and while you're in a generous mood, uh, pick up a better a better buy for a better value for your dollar. Go pick up Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder, especially if you're fans of this show. <laughs> Support something classy like Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. I like I like this <laughs> podcast. Uh, and once again, yes, when you buy this book, you support an educator. So you you, you help support an educator and help her buy a witch costume. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, kids. So thank you for joining us. Uh, come back next time. Again, next two weeks, we'll be getting uh, more electric mullets. So. Me and the boys covering some more. So super- wait, who had the better m- or worse mullet? Superman or Nightwing? Uh, uh, I hate to say it. I'm- might have been Superman. I mean, well, I know Superman's more famous. There must have been a lot of mullets in the 90s. Oh, there are so many mullets in the 90s. DC and Marvel. There are so many mullets. Who else had a mullet, Phil? As uh, you play us out, who else, who else graced us with a mullet? Depending on who did the art, I know Peter Parker kind of rocked a mullet sometimes in the 90s. Uh, everyone either had everyone either had mullet or like long hair or a ponytail. Yeah, there was a lot of that in the 90s. I mean, Nick, Dick had all of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He went from mullet to the long hair point of view. Again, it depends who the artist is. Alright, kids. Come back next time. Remember, join us same wing time. Thank you, kids. See! Like this. And remember, kids, that's Gotham's ass. <laughs>